Could you possibly be the jerk for letting your mom sleep over? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for not wanting my sister at my wedding since she's in a wheelchair and will take up all of the spotlight? My sister, 26, has been on and off out of the hospital. I'm going to call my sister Anna. Anna got cancer when she was 15 and was able to beat it. Ever since, she's been having growths and anytime one appears, we are worried about the cancer coming back. My issue is that she always makes these announcements that she needs to go to the doctors again at the worst times. At the beginning, I thought it was just bad timing, but it has happened so many times when I hit a milestone. My graduations, my birthdays, my engagement party, anytime she makes an announcement she needs to go back to the hospital, my whole family will flock to her. I've had my birthday dinner turn into my relatives flocking to her for the whole night. I had a dinner party to announce my wedding date for my relatives. It was going so great and it was a fun time until Anna told mom she needs to go back to the hospital. Soon, everyone forgot about the reason for the dinner party and it was quiet. My aunt even stepped in to do a pray for Anna. Another event was taken over. I went low contact with her after that. She was invited to the wedding and it's in two weeks. I learned today that she's on and off in a wheelchair for my mom slash Anna. She'll need to take it just in case for the wedding. I asked if the rest of the family was informed and she told me no. I told both of them they need to inform them. They told me they don't want to worry them and won't do that. I had enough and told them you need to tell them before my wedding. Again, a no. I then informed them Anna is not invited. This started a huge argument about how I'm a jerk and my point is that I'm sick of her stealing the spotlight. That's what will happen if she rolls in with a wheelchair. I really don't blame OP here and ultimately I think the best of both worlds is considering they're saying it's nothing big, it's nothing to worry about. It won't be a big issue, it shouldn't be a big deal. That OP can go and play the whole, oh, I wasn't aware it was a big deal thing and send out a memo to everybody going to the wedding saying, hey, just a heads up guys, this is most likely going to be in and out of a wheelchair. I've been told it's nothing to actually worry about, but I don't want anybody to be surprised. You know, please be accommodating and whatnot. If they get mad at you, so what? It's not a big deal apparently and they weren't helping you out to begin with. It's not even like leaking real genuine medical info, you know, there's no disclosing of why they're in a wheelchair or anything like that. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for telling a stranger that I'm not her therapist and to stop interrupting my checkout at the store? I was at a bookstore last night after work. When I got to the register, it was empty. A moment later, an employee came back around with another customer. The other customer got in line behind me while still chatting with the employee. I could tell the employee was a little uncomfortable as she called me forward. The other customer stood literally right behind me as the employee kept doing the brush off of, yeah, oh really, wow. The other customer was talking about how she'd recently been diagnosed with cancer, going into details about the treatments she'd need, etc. Finally, she was quiet when it was clear the employee was focused on my transaction and trying to ask me the whole, do you have a rewards card, do you want one, etc. spiel. That was when the other customer turned to me and started giving me the same story. I said I was sorry to hear about her diagnosis and went back to speaking to the employee. The customer still kept talking right in my ear saying, yeah, I'm so ticked, why'd this have to happen to me? Finally, I told her, you need to back up and give me some space. Stop interrupting our conversation. She started saying, I have cancer, I need to vent. I said again, sorry to hear that, but we are not your therapists. Back up. She backed up and went silent. Employee looked relieved. I told my wife what happened and she told me I was rude. The woman was clearly going through something. I said as a former retail worker, I despised people who unloaded their days on me and she was clearly making the employee uncomfortable while also standing right next to me. Wife said I was still wrong. Am I the jerk? I mean, there's nothing wrong if you want to take that on and listen to their venting, but at the same time, it's not your burden to bear, and I think OP feeling the way they did, especially knowing that the employee was feeling the exact same way, definitely wasn't out of line. Our next story is, am I the jerk for ordering food to go when my friend group wanted to split the check evenly? This has been an ongoing issue. I have a friends group that likes to eat nicer food. Personally, for me, I'm fine getting something cheap on the menu. The issue is they always want to split the check. I have had the conversation so many times that I want to pay for what I ordered. It results in an argument where I have to bend or everyone is mad at me. I also make a lot more than my friends, so it always results in them basically calling me cheap. 
They don't get I want to pay for my meals and that is it. Anyways, we went out to eat yesterday and they all ordered things that were around $30. I got the house salad and my total was around $12. They told the server to split the bill and I didn't want to fight about it again. I asked the server to add onto the bill an entree and a dessert for me to take home. This resulted in my bill going up into the 30s, so they asked me what I was doing. I told them I'm getting more food. They got upset that I increased the price they needed to pay. This resulted in another argument and they think I'm a jerk. I'm on board with OP here. If you're going to be spending that much because everybody is staunchly believing in we have to split the check, you might as well make it worth your while and take something back home, right? I would just start considering whether or not going out with these people is a good fit for OP. Our next story is, am I the jerk for asking my sister and her family to leave and ruin our family dinner? My girlfriend, female 29, and I, male 29, were going to host Thanksgiving dinner last year. We had everything planned and we invited our closest family members, her parents, my parents, my siblings, and my sister's family. Unfortunately, we had some health issues concerning my girlfriend's pregnancy. Even though she was 31 weeks pregnant just a few days before Thanksgiving, she had to have an emergency C-section. I won't go into too much detail with that since it's irrelevant, but the thing is that we canceled dinner. My girlfriend and our baby had to be in the hospital for a bit. My girlfriend and I decided to just stay home during Christmas and New Year's Eve dinner too, as she was still recovering from the surgery and we honestly didn't feel like doing much. However, since she's been feeling better now, she thought it would be a good idea to have a family dinner now to make up for all of our missed holidays this year. Long story short, we planned a dinner for yesterday. My girlfriend and I are vegan, usually she doesn't mind too much being around cooked meat, but we prefer not to have it in our home. My sister, female 35, is married and has two kids, both boys under 10. My girlfriend and I cooked for everyone, and when our families came, my sister's husband asked where the real food was after we told them what we've cooked, all vegan dishes. My girlfriend is a little oversensitive still, so I took my family aside and kindly asked them to not make any harsh comments like that. They said they'll be careful, and my sister's husband apologized. However, as I was finishing cooking some of our food, someone rang the bell. My sister said, oh, it must be delivery for the kids. And yeah, it was. She had ordered fried chicken for her kids since they surely won't like what my girlfriend and I cooked. That caused a big argument between me and my sister since she didn't tell me that she was ordering chicken, which I wouldn't have allowed. The discussion escalated and I ended up asking my sister and her family to leave. After that, my parents also got upset with me and they left as well. We ended up having dinner just with my in-laws and my brother. I feel like I did something wrong because now my parents or sister don't want to talk to me unless I apologize for being an extremist, but I was only trying to keep my girlfriend comfortable and happy in her own house. I need different point of views here, please. I don't fault OP for what they did, but did OP warn them in advance that this was going to be a situation where there were only vegan meals? Or did OP just kind of leave it up to assumption that they would know or expect that? Either way, their reactions in general were pretty harsh. The whole, where's the real food, and immediately turning around and ordering fried chicken is a bit ridiculous. I mean, it's not like a plant-based meal is going to kill their entire family to have for one day. Our next story is, am I the jerk for convincing my boyfriend to not take guardianship of his sister's children? My boyfriend and I have been dating for a few years and planning to get engaged sometime this summer and married next year. He is the youngest of three siblings, one sister, two brothers, and I'm the youngest in my family and have one older sister. Recently, his sister brought up the topic that if her and her husband were to pass away, they would want my boyfriend to take guardianship of their child. And me, as we were getting married next year, they have a two and a half year old and are expecting another, due date May. My boyfriend was open to the idea and brought it up to me to get my opinion. I said I wouldn't want that and if he were to agree to it, this would jeopardize our relationship. I don't want to look after and be responsible for his sister's children. We live in a high cost of living area and we want children of our own. So if worst case scenario something did happen to his sister and brother-in-law, I don't want to be responsible for two children and don't think we could even afford it. I'm also not particularly close with his sister slash brother-in-law and confused as to why they would want my boyfriend to have guardianship in this case. As their older brother is more equipped, married and has children of his own, 
Sister's husband also has two siblings which are married and have children of their own. Boyfriend is a middle school teacher, maybe that's why? And is close with his sister but has no children or experience looking after children. He spends a lot of his free time playing PS5 and coaching high school lacrosse. Boyfriend eventually agreed with me and told his sister that he wouldn't want guardianship and maybe we can revisit this topic a few years down the line. Sister got mad and is blaming me for changing his mind and is now talking trash about me to the rest of the family and saying I'm not considering her children's future. Why should I? They're not my children. Am I the jerk for not wanting guardianship of her children if they were to pass away and convincing my boyfriend to not agree to it? I don't think OP's the jerk here and it's honestly sad to see them get so in a fit that OP doesn't want to. Acting like OP sharing their honest feelings and concerns to their boyfriend qualifies as, like, corruption. This next story is, Am I the jerk for not letting my parents babysit my 5-year-old because of something that happened years ago? My daughter is 5 and I've never let my parents babysit her because of something that happened years ago way before my husband and I planned to have our daughter. One time, my parents were babysitting my brother's three sons, ages 11, 9, and 6, for a weekend. Saturday afternoon, they took the boys out to eat and then back to the house. When they got back, my dad parked the car in the garage, closed it, and they all went inside the house. About 40 minutes later, they hear someone outside honking the car horn repetitively, but they couldn't find any cars outside. They later realized that the honking was coming from the garage and that it was the six-year-old that had fallen asleep and had awoken and was frantically trying to get their attention because he was terrified. We live in Florida, and with the summer heat, something tragic could have happened. We are all thankful that he is okay and that he woke up and alerted everyone. My mom's reaction to all this was infuriating. The 11-year-old quickly called his mom, he's given his own phone anytime he's away from home, to let her know what happened, and my mom was so annoyed and upset at him for that. She also blamed him for forgetting his little brother in the car. Ever since this happened, I lost all trust in my parents with handling children. For the last five years, my mom has told me that she wishes to watch my daughter, but my husband and I don't feel comfortable with this. To be honest, I don't care much if her feelings are hurt. I don't feel like my daughter will be safe with her, and if something bad happens, I know she won't come forward about it and will try to hide it or downplay it. She's told me that we're being unreasonable by not letting her grandma spend quality time with our daughter. Am I the jerk? I definitely think this is a very valid thing to be concerned about regarding your kids. And not only is the circumstance enough to make you concerned, but more than anything, I feel like it's their reaction after the fact. There was no sincere emotion that showed that they were incredibly regrettable for being so forgetful. The fact that they were trying to deflect and blame an 11 year old for them forgetting the 6 year old in the car tells you all you really need to know about them. Our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to send the kids to bed early just because my husband wants to relax? My husband works 10 hour shifts at a shipyard, leaves at 8am and is home by 6.30pm. His job is 30 minutes down the street. I work 8 hour shifts at home while also homeschooling our 3 school aged kids, 7 year old twins, 5 year old, nursing our 2 month old and doing all the cooking. We do not homeschool as in normal. Schools have been shut down for 5 or 6 weeks after finding lead and the drinking water. But given this, I'm doing far more than my husband is. Not that it's a competition, but let's be real. While this past week has been extremely rough on me mentally, there was a child death in my family, and another family member is hospitalized in the ICU. I'm struggling to power through it while still working, homeschooling, nursing the baby, and cooking by myself. My husband is the opposite though. He isn't even remotely affected by what's going on in my family right now. He didn't know the child and he's not close to my hospitalized family member. He checks in on me through text during the day, but when he gets home, he doesn't mention it. Doesn't ask how I am. He grabs his plate of dinner and takes the baby to go hang out with him while I clean up. I know it could be argued that he should be helping clean, but me and my children are clean freaks and enjoy cleaning, so it's no issue. But the night before last, he asked if I could send the kids to bed early, 7pm, because he just wanted to relax. I said no, the kids have been great all day and they weren't even bothering him, so no. They won't be punished for zero reason. Then last night at like 6.50ish he goes, so we're sending the kids to bed at 7, right? I said no, why would we? And he snapped. 
He said, I just want to freaking relax without having anyone talk to me after busting my butt all day. I'm tired of working and getting zero downtime. And storms out of the room. This absolutely ticked me off because I work full time and do everything in this house. So I should be the one begging for a break. The kids are in bed by 8, meaning he literally has two and a half hours to deal with them daily. But anyways, he comes back in and says, Sorry, can we just please send them to bed? I said no and walked away. He's ticked at me and says I'm not letting him catch a break once a week. OP's pretty clearly not the jerk here. It's incredibly unfair to the kids, especially considering OP saying they're behaving themselves, they're not being bad. Sending them to bed at 7 o'clock just because they want to have some downtime is just not fair. You know, your kids aren't personal effects. You can't just box them up and put them back on the shelf when you don't want to play with them. Our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to wear a wig to my sister's wedding? When I was 10 years old, I, 17 year old female, lost all my hair and have been bald ever since. It bothered me a lot at first, so I would always wear wigs to hide my baldness. Since about a year, I've kind of come to accept it, and now I even think I can look pretty cute even without wearing a wig. So I started wearing wigs less and less, and since about 3 months ago, I stopped wearing them completely. Now, my older sister, 24-year-old female, is getting married in a few weeks, and she asked me if I would wear a wig to her wedding. I said I wouldn't, and she asked me again to do it for her because it's just a small effort on my part. I refused again because I finally got comfortable with my appearance, and I don't want to hide it anymore. She told me I'm being unreasonable because it's such a small thing to do for her wedding day and walked off. Now, my parents are also trying to convince me to just do this one little thing for my sister on her special day to make her happy, but it feels like everyone is just trying to hide that I'm bald. I'd understand her point if I had never gone anywhere without a wig before, and this would be the first time everyone saw me without a wig, but everyone had already seen me without a wig. Everyone already knows I'm bald, so there wouldn't be any attention stealing. Am I the jerk for refusing to honor my sister's request about wearing a wig? I think it's flat out ridiculous to go up to somebody and say, Hey, can you wear a wig to my wedding? I feel like it's just about on the same level as going up to somebody and saying, Hey, can you wear a girdle to my wedding? I just don't want too much belly showing. Or asking somebody to cover their tattoos up with makeup or something, it's just ridiculous. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my friend she's not entitled to a king bed at our Airbnb? So a bit of context, me and my three friends have booked a boys trip down to the beach because a few of our other friends will be down there. Well, one of our friends invited his girlfriend, let's call her Jay, without telling any of us till three days before the trip. She hangs with us a lot and we're all sweet with her coming, however the issue is we booked a house with three beds, a king and two singles. Me and Jay are quite close. Jay is texting me at the moment saying her and her partner will take the king and they'll bring a blow mattress for the person who doesn't get a single. This is where my question comes in. I told her that we would all put our names in a hat and whoever gets picked first gets first pick of beds and so on till the last person takes the blow up. She has gotten very angry at me saying because she's a woman and in a couple she deserves the king bed with her partner. I understand this point but she wasn't originally invited to this trip and no one wants to sleep on a blow up mattress. So am I the jerk for telling her she can't claim the king bed? Considering there's going to be 5 people and 3 beds, I don't blame OP for feeling this way when the extra person was tacked on. I mean maybe she can have an argument about the king bed if things are being split 5 ways now. If she's not paying anything for this airbnb trip, then does she really have any kind of entitlement to that king bed? She can have one of the singles and her boyfriend can push the air mattress up next to it. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not participating in my fiance's weird Xmas underwear tradition? This year, I celebrated Christmas with my fiance's family for the first time. Before we went to my fiance's parents' house, my fiance warned me that his parents usually come short in the amount of food they cook for Christmas dinner and that there's often not enough for everyone. What I didn't expect though was to be expected to participate in the family's weird tradition. Apparently they have a long standing tradition where instead of drawing straws, they'll throw all their underwear in a bin and then go take turns wearing a blindfold and drawing a pair of underwear from the pile and drawing the smallest pair of underwear correlating to drawing the smallest straw. I had never heard of this tradition. 
So I felt blindsided right before Christmas dinner. My fiance's mom yelled out that it was time to pull the straws and decide the order of who got to plate up their food first in case there wasn't enough for everyone. At first, I thought the family was joking when they announced this, so I laughed, which made my fiance get real defensive. I volunteered to get my food last so I wouldn't have to participate, but my fiance just got more annoyed and asked me to just try and be a bit more agreeable. The whole thing was just kind of weirding me out, so I called an Uber and went home. Now things are real tense between me and my fiancé, since he now says I made a bad impression by acting like I was too good for their family tradition. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk. I can understand why this feels way too invasive or too personal. And it's also a situation of, if you're going to somebody's house for Christmas, it's not uncommon to only spend like a day, maybe two there max. You might not have but a pair or two with you depending on where you traveled or where you went, especially if you're just close enough to drive there. I'm telling you now, ain't no way I'm gonna go to the bathroom to take my underwear off so I can throw it in a pile. And I'm darn sure not doing it in front of everybody. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my mother-in-law she won't be seeing my baby after throwing a baby shower for herself? My husband and I are expecting our first child. We moved to be closer to his family. I'm no contact with mine. My mother-in-law has been referring to the baby as her baby this entire time. She'll say things like, I can't wait for my baby to be born. My baby is going to be so loved. This rubs me the wrong way for reasons I cannot explain. But my husband tells me to ignore her. My mother-in-law wanted to throw me a baby shower and invite her friends. She said they made an agreement a long time ago that they would celebrate each other's kids, weddings, and births. My husband and I eloped and declined a reception for her friends since we don't know them. My mother-in-law told me I owed it to her to let her throw the baby shower since I hurt her friends' feelings by not having a wedding reception. I asked if I could invite my friends and she said no, that this was for her friends and that if my friends wanted to throw me a shower, they could. I reluctantly agreed. My husband and I spent hours on our registry, and my mother-in-law asked for it too so she could share with her friends. She said she forwarded the registry on. She asked me what design I wanted on my cake and cookies. I told her flowers because I'm decorating the nursery in a garden theme. At the shower, they provided me with a mother-to-be sash and my mother-in-law a granny-to-be sash to wear. I noticed that the theme of the shower was circus animals. The cake had an elephant and balloons on it and the cookies were animals. At first I thought that maybe the floral theme was just too difficult, so I rolled with it until it was time to open presents. Every present was some sort of circus animal. Onesies, blankets, toys, nothing on my registry. I was a little confused and even went so far to check my registry to make sure I hadn't goofed up and changed everything. I thanked everyone for their gifts and tried to sound as gracious as possible, but... I was so confused. My husband, who is a little less tactful than I am, showed up at the end of the shower and noticed the theme right away. He goes, what's up with all the circus animals? He looks at the presents and says, this isn't what we asked for. Then he looked at his mom and goes, mom, what did you do? She smiled and said, I didn't like the theme you chose for my baby. I'm going to decorate my baby's nursery at my house with circus animals, so I created a registry for myself. My husband said, you did what? She says, my baby is going to need a room at my house, so I threw a shower for myself. I lost my composure and told her that she would not see my baby and to stop calling the baby hers. And my husband told his mom that she's delusional if she thinks we're going to allow this. She started crying and said we're just withholding her baby from her. We've been getting texts from his family since the shower, calling us selfish and ungrateful, and saying we ruined her joy of being a grandma. OP's definitely not the jerk here. I mean, this is incredibly selfish. I mean, really, I could go on saying all the different ways about how awful and self-centered this is, but I think you get the gist. It's just straight up laughable what she did here. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not inviting my friend's husband to dinner because he eats way too much? My friend has been married for a year now to her firefighter husband. She is the only one in the friend group that is married. I usually host dinners every couple of months and we're going to do a late one for the holidays on Friday. I usually invite him, but money has gotten tight due to the holidays and he eats so much. I understand why, but it always results in my having to do double recipes or I run out of food. 
So this time, I told everyone that I want to just do a girls' night. This means my friend's husband is not invited. If he isn't there, that there's enough food for everyone without double recipes. She called me up asking why I'm doing a girls' night. I told her the truth that I can't afford to make double for dinner and her husband eats a lot. She called me a jerk and now she's telling my friends why. Everyone is split and no one is offering to help with the food bill. OP added in the comments that every time he came over, he would eat two to three servings. I mean, in general, it just doesn't sound like a very considerate guest and very reasonable as to why you wouldn't invite them back. Especially if they know that that's an issue and they're not willing to try to help compensate for any costs that may incur or maybe help in providing some of the ingredients or whatnot. This next story is, am I the jerk for letting my mom sleep over? 32 year old male, I've been with my wife for 6 years and we have a 3 month old daughter. For the past year, my mom has been battling with severe depression following the incarceration of my brother. He lived with her when he got locked up and she's never lived alone so it took a toll on her mentally. He's in prison for 19 years, so I don't see it changing anytime soon either. I helped her get into therapy six months or so ago, following my wife making a comment about not wanting my mother here every single day. To be completely fair to my wife, it was in fact getting exhausting. My mom would show up at various times during the day without notice and hang out for hours because she didn't want to be alone and entertaining her every single day was getting super irritating. Especially given that my wife and I had zero downtime or alone time. So anyways, I got my mom into therapy. For the past 4 months, my mom has still been stopping by but it's not nearly as frequent. She got a boyfriend now, so she's only been stopping by once or twice a week and doesn't stay for more than an hour. My wife still hates it, but says she will take this over how it was any day. But two days ago, my mom showed up in hysterics. She was completely inconsolable. Her and her boyfriend were fighting, and I guess it just made all her mental anguish flood back. She asked if she could stay the night. I ran it by my wife, who said whatever, and locked herself away in the bedroom. She hadn't gotten any sleep the night before. I told my mom, you can stay the night, but you need to leave in the morning. I'm going to be honest with you. My wife doesn't want you here. She hasn't been sleeping and this is inconvenient. She said she would leave first thing in the morning, but the next day she was even worse than the night before. She was freaking out and hyperventilating because she didn't want to go home to an empty house. Said she hadn't slept at all. She was afraid of driving on no sleep, etc., and asked if she could take a nap in our bed so she could be arrested for the drive. Our couch, where she slept, was not comfortable. My wife said that was fine, but she had better be gone by the time we got back from the grocery and other errands. We left at 10 a.m., got home at 8 p.m., and my mom was still sleeping in our bed. The baby was super fussy and my wife was livid. She said, go wake her the freak up and tell her to leave or I'm going to lose my crap. This is unacceptable. I tried waking my mom, but she kept saying, five more minutes and turning away. My wife just looked at me and said, I'm done with this bull crap and packed up the baby again and left for a hotel. She said she won't come back until I go no contact with my mom and cut the umbilical cord because my mom didn't get out of my bed until nearly midnight and then went back to sleep on the couch instead of leaving. Am I the jerk? I mean, I completely understand where OP's coming from. Their mom is clearly struggling with stuff and it's manifesting into some very annoying habits, but OP has to set these boundaries not just for themselves but for their family. Their wife clearly is already far beyond that limit. If OP can't set those boundaries and enforce them, they may be at a serious risk of losing their whole marriage. The question now for OP is, what's more worth it to them? Acquiescing to their mom and letting their mom walk all over them in this situation, or setting those boundaries and having your marriage still? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy Am I the Jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.